Alright, in this video I'd like to talk about decision trees. Assuming that you have some data that has been partitioned, notice in this data partition that I have right here, 50% of the data is going to training and 50% is going to validation. I can then go and create my first model. So under the model tab, I will pull down a decision tree. I will run something to that. And first I'm going to demonstrate the creation of a maximal tree. So using a chi-square driven algorithm, this, uh, the decision trees are created in every case and then they can be pruned if you run an automatic procedure or they can be not pruned at all in, in the maximal tree case. And so to demonstrate that, I will show the uh, over here in the properties panel. I will go to interactive under train. Once that's open, I see this first um, split point that's available. And I, if I go and I, well, there's a couple different things that I could do. But if I just simply click on, uh, well, okay, if I click on split node, I can do it in a manual approach. And so this is the chi-square based number that is created called log worth. And this, deter this what this does is it's, it's showing us which is the variable that's best to use for uh, splitting our data to get better predictions of a one or a zero outcome, for, in this case for a donor or non-donor. Uh, and if I click on edit rule, I can see within that uh, what point within the data is the best point to split it at. So we get kind of two different things happening. One is the function scans every single variable for which is the best one and then also within each one what's the uh, point to split it at. And uh, so the first, so if I were to just click this, I can, it would create that first split point and I could do it again in, in this interactive fashion. And we can tell just by the, the magnitude of this number that it's less important than the previous split was in terms of predicting uh, whether somebody was a one or a zero. And, when, and then we can also see what the split point is for that. So we could do this manually all the way on down. Or I can right click on here and just say train node and what and if I will right click on here and say uh, view fit to page this is our maximal tree so using this chi-square inspired algorithm uh, it selects all of the variables and all the split points within the variables to create a tree for making decisions in and if I were to zoom back in a little bit so I could see one better um, one of the things I can see here, just to kind of explain it a little bit, is that the the variable was gift count 36 months, and if we go, if the value in there is less than 2.5, then we already know uh, that within our, our training data set that there's a 57% chance that it's a non-donor, and there's a 43% chance that it's a donor, and better yet, we know that in the data that has not been seen yet, the validation data set, that it's almost 57% no and 50 and 43% yes. So this is probably this is actually the more important thing to be considering. Now the maximal tree is generally not going to be your best tree to use. You actually want to use one that's trimmed down. Uh, the reason for that is that in, in on the whole, uh, if you specify that many splits, you're, you're usually over-optimized for the particular data set you did the training with and not as much for, uh, you've kind of overcomplicated things. And it's probably, if, if you had simply chosen less split points, uh, you would probably be, be able to have a higher accuracy rate in predicting cases on a data set that hasn't been seen yet. Uh, because what we've done is we've overtrained or over optimized our tree for a particular set of data and it's picking up all every single last nuance in that data. Well not really every last one but close enough. Um, we picked up a lot of nuances in the data that just might be random and uh, so typically a smaller tree will be better. Uh, so 
I am going to just rename this one just regular decision tree. And I want I'm just gonna and and to run this, I don't have to change anything. I just right click and hit run. But let me before I do that, let me just point out a couple of things that in terms of well now there's this subtree part right here. And so the way that this the the decision tree uh, nodes work is that first they create the maximal tree and then they trim them down in order to uh, work the best against the validation set. And there's a couple different ways that you can define best. Um, in this case, because it knows that the target outcome is one or zero, it's going to say, well, we're going to try to optimize the branches that would be used for making a one or a zero decision um, with the particular data set that we have. Uh, we have another option, which I'll demonstrate in a minute, which I'll call misclassification. Uh, but for now, we'll just stick with we're going to trim the tree based on uh, checking against a validation data set and, and really we're checking to get the best alignment of ones and zeros uh, that we can. So I just simply right click on there and say run. It will create a new tree that is started off with the maximal tree but then it trimmed it to and it tries several different methods of trimming. Right, and we get this results window. And so notice how this tree looks very different than the other one. It actually has the same initial split that the other one did, but it uh, it is it's much smaller. And let me now create one last tree. And I'm going to call this a probability tree. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter this way that it trims the the tree. I'm going to use average squared error, which means it's uh, instead of just going against uh, optimizing it for a one or zero decision, it's trying to optimize it for the numeric outcome in any given uh, leaf. So remember we visualized them before and we see things like 57% and 43% chance of doing this or that. So we're trying to optimize and get as close as we can to that number. So if we're trying to estimate something else um, other than a yes no decision uh, such as the amount of money that people are going to spend and we want to get as close to that number as we can then average squared error would be the right way and the best way to trim the tree. So it just kind of depends on what it is you're trying to predict. If you're trying to predict yes, no, then a uh, just a decision measure would be the right thing to use to trim your tree. If you're trying to predict an, a number as your outcome, then you'll want to use um, average square error. All right, here we have another tree that's been created, and this time it's it again it started with the same initial split uh, it behind the scenes it had the same maximal tree to begin with but then it trimmed off leaves based on and split points based on uh, you know wh how well it it um, it matched the you know the training data versus the validation data the the numbers that are listed there so and note that it look it, using that pruning method it came up with a different number now a question we should probably have is okay now which one is actually the best one meaning overall which of the trees that we made is most it has the highest level of accuracy in predicting outcomes well because we're doing decisions one of the best things that we should look at is this misclassification number here there's that, in this little table here it says fit statistics we want to look at two different things uh, misclassification rate is the percentage of the observations that it gets wrong so you create your tree to kind of tell you um, 
you know, if you're greater than 2.5, are you going to give or not give? How, how many times did you misclassify? Well, given the, given the tree that we've created here, uh, we're wrong 43% uh, of the time in the validation data, which is what we want to look at. We trained with our training data, and then we tested on data it's never seen before. It's wrong 43% of the time. And then we have this other thing right here. Uh, actually, let's go with average squared error. So that's another way to look at it and we want to have the lowest number for this as well so you could use either one of these numbers to uh, analyze compare and contrast which of the models is best and because it takes a little bit of time to go in and out of the windows I won't do this here but um, I would recommend that you would look into each of these and look at their misclassification rate and their average squared error and whichever one has the lowest you want to go with that one last thing I'd like to to mention is that if you go after you've uh, after you viewed the results of something, if you go view model subtree assessment plot, you can you can see what happened when it started with its maximal tree with 15 leaves. That the mis uh, let me go over to misclassification rate first. So this is kind of get, gives you a little bit of an intellect, uh, just a sense for what's going on behind the scenes. When, when you start, when it started with the maximal tree and started, uh, well, when it started there, the misclassification rate for the training data, or sorry, for the validation data, um, was getting better. It was at forty percent. Um, however, that same formula as it were with all those different leaves all the different categories you can be dropped into really didn't perform as well it was three percent worse on the validation data this blue line finds where you had the simplest smallest tree that um, had the the best performance on the validation data set which is what we want we want something that's really well predictive of data that it's never seen before in terms of predicting a, a one or a zero a donor or a non-donor and this blue line indicates that uh, five leaves is the one that does that you could also similarly look at average squared error and kind of see the same story that if you're going to judge your model based on its performance in terms of predicting numbers that uh, numerical outcomes rather than one zero that we have although that is a number but you mean you know what I mean in terms of class um, in, in terms of something else like how much you're going to spend or percentage likelihood if you're trying to most accurately gauge the percentage likelihood of doing something not simply like one zero uh, again we can see that uh, if we added in a bunch of leaves with our maximal tree all the way to 15 leaves, uh, you know, the, we get a certain rate for squared error. That our squared error is relatively low, at least compared to the picture, but the validation de data set doesn't do as good. So we've kind of overtrained. We're predicting um, our, own, our, our training data set better and better, but we're predicting a validation data set worse and worse. And again, it shows that five leaves is, is where it's max. It, it where it best performs against the validation data.